Order, the member for Narrakan. Thank you, Acting Speaker. And I'm very pleased to uh, have the opportunity to speak on the take note motion on the budget on behalf of my community. And in my 13 years in this place, this state budget has to be the worst state budget West Gippsland has ever seen. Not once in the Treasurer's contribution, his budget con contribution, did the word Gippsland even appear. The most important project currently missing from the government's agenda is the West Gippsland Hospital. We face many challenges in Narrakan. Pollution, uh, population, pollution, population growth is putting enormous pressure on infrastructure across the electorate. And unless quick action is taken to invest in a new hospital, our health services will not be able to keep up with the rapidly increasing demand. A new hospital ticks every box for West Gippsland residents. We have 1,200 births a year at the current site which have now been, now been capped because of the constant and increasing demand for the quality midwifery services provided uh, by the medical staff. The emergency department is doing its absolute best in limited space, often bursting with patients needing urgent care. We have limited car parking that results in vehicles parking in Lansborough Road, with visitors and patients having to cross a dangerous busy road, potentially illegally parked, because there is no space on site to safely park. Acting Speaker, the Greenfield site between Warrigal and Druin is perfectly located with excellent transport links and access to the freeway and both towns. It is an absolute no-brainer to build a new hospital on the Greenfield site of 59 acres, rather than commit the management staff and patients to years of construction disruption by rebuilding the current hospital that sits on a site of only 27 acres. The business case and feasibility study for both sites have been completed, but the Andrews government can, continues to insult our community by not releasing the details of this work. And to make matters even worse, the Victorian Government was given the opportunity earlier this year to submit a list of priority capital works projects that could be considered for a share of the Morrison Government's $1.4 billion Rural Capital Health Fund. My understanding is that the Department of Health and Human Services compiled a list for the Premier, and this list included the West Gippsland Hospital. The member for Monash, Russell Broadbent, arranged a meeting with the Prime Minister to request support for the West Gippsland Hospital only to be told by the Prime Minister that West Gippsland was not on the list of priority projects submitted by the Andrews Government. The Prime Minister explained with considerable regret that unless the State Government supported this project, he was unable to provide funding. What a disgrace and a slap on the face for our community. All of the planning work has been funded and finalised over the past four years. It clearly stacks up in favour of a new hospital on the Greenfield site and the current hospital is really struggling to cope with increasing demand. Throw into the mix a predicted population of 90,000 by 2035 that our hospital will have to serve and right now is really struggling to cope with a population of 52,000. It is my understanding that the Premier ordered the West Gippsland Hospital be removed from the priority list prepared by the Department. How can a Premier who promises to govern for all Victorians commit such an act of betrayal on the community of Narrakeen? The Premier should be absolutely ashamed of himself for promoting hospital capital projects based on political outcome rather than the genuine healthcare needs of a rapidly, rapidly growing community. The arrogance of this Premier has no boundaries. And yes, Acting Speaker, I know what the Premier would say in, re in retaliation to my comments. He would brag about the $9.5 million that his government has provided for the additional operating theatre and short stay unit. But let me tell you, these works have proven categorically what the community has been saying for some time, that this is throwing good money after bad, and our community should not be expected to accept second best or worse still, be expected to drive an hour to get health care. We now find that there is contamination in the structure of the old hospital in the area designated for the new theatre. This has caused the closure of operating theatres for a minimum of two months, while all the internal services are stripped and replaced with new vinyl, new ceilings and fittings. One can only imagine the construction mayhem that would dog a rebuild of this ageing facility and the enormous cost blowouts that, blowouts that would occur. We must build a new West Gippsland Hospital on the Greenfield site. There is no other option. With our population growth, another major challenge is public transport. This budget is no better for regional commuters, particularly those on the Gippsland line. Already Gippsland commuters have had the worst end of the stick when it comes to cancellations and delays. Hit first by the Skyrail project and now with the Metro Rail Tunnel. By now, Gippsland commuters are rightly asking what's in all of this for them. The only answer to this funding is for a dedicated line for, for Gippsland V-Line trains through the Metro system, as the Coalition promised prior to the last election. Instead, Gippsland passengers continue to get hit with line closures, bus replacements, and hours longer each day commuting to work and home to their families. 
No wonder commuter confidence in V-Line and public transport service delivery is at an all-time low. Now in this budget we see no funding for new carriages desperately needed for long-haul commuters on the Gippsland Line. All regional commuters are asking for is a fair share of the benefits that will flow for all the disruption they are enduring. The key elements of this budget are broken promises, cuts to services and increased debt. At a time when families are being asked to do more with less, the Premier deliberately makes it harder for people to make ends meet and for businesses to expand and create more jobs. As you look through the budget papers, there are massive cuts to many, many areas. The Regional Growth Fund has been cut. There's been cuts to multicultural affairs, agriculture, veterans, resources, planning, local government, emergency management capacity. This list just goes on and on and on. And at the same time, the Premier and Treasurer keep on increasing taxes. Just one example is the whack they are giving to every property in the state by bumping up the fire services levy by 10%. Businesses, businesses are doing it tough. Taxing them more will not help regenerate jobs or growth. And Acting Speaker, on Friday night last I witnessed firsthand an example of the lack of regard this government has for small business and the impact of red tape and over-regulation. We have a, a new Vietnamese restaurant in Warrigal opened two months ago by John Mai, a, a proud Vietnamese Australian who has made a significant investment in this business. John's passion is Vietnamese food and his commitment is to bring the best of Vietnamese traditional cuisine to Warrigal and he has done so with outstanding success. John, last Friday night an officer from the VCGLR rocked up at 7.30pm, the busiest time on a Friday night, and demanded to see a red line plan for the restaurant. John produced the red line plan provided by and approved by the Borbore Shire that had been sent to the VCGLR but was told by Tamara Maxwell, the officer, that he would be fined because he had not been stamped by the VCGLR. Their own website explains the owner is to keep a copy of the last red line plan that was submitted for approval to the VCGLR. It does not say that it has to be a stamped copy. John had never received a stamped copy from the VCGLR. It is difficult enough to get this type of investment in country towns. We don't need this type of harassment. I guess this happens when the Minister does not take control of her department and allows her bureaucrats to operate in an intimidating manner. Acting Speaker, as I stated at the beginning of my contribution, this is the worst state budget I have ever seen for regional Victoria. The contrast between 16 years of Labor and four years of coalition governments could not be more stark. During our most recent term, we established the Regional Growth Fund. We collaborated with local businesses and employers in regional Victoria to deliver real jobs and help to stimulate growth through the Latrobe Valley Industry and Infrastructure Fund. We made the investments in our regional rail network with the Lardness Track Rail Crossing upgrade, the Warrigal Railway Station car park and underpass. We delivered funding aimed at addressing the neglect Labor had, had bestowed on our regional roads with our Country Roads and Bridges Fund and provide the State Government a share of the funding for the Sand Road Interchange to get that project delivered. We funded community projects in country towns through the Putting Locals First program, also supported by the Regional Growth Fund that the Andrews Government has now cut funding for and abolished. Acting Speaker, there is one more item that has received no funding in this budget in an area that, if not addressed, has the potential to devastate country communities, country and metropolitan jobs. Our native forest timber industry is being absolutely hammered by the indecision of the Andrews Government and the lack of funding to undertake a threatened species survey that is far broader than just the area of forest set aside for timber production. As one local forest has recently said to me, everywhere we look we find the possum and glider, and this supports the recently updated numbers of both species. It also proves that the management plan that, that was put in place for the leadbeater possum in 1996 has been very, very effective. There is no need to take more resource away from the timber industry. Only the Radical Greens keep pushing for more area to be set aside, as they know it will lead to the closure of the industry. The hypocrisy of this approach is sickening. To shut down our own sustainable native forest industry and then replace the product it currently supplies with imports from rainforests in countries who have no oversight would be an absolute disgrace. To increase the use of steel and other products that have a massive carbon footprint at the expense of a product that is renewable and stores carbon would also be just plain wrong. The Andrews government need to stop playing politics with the livelihood of hard-working timber families and stand up for them. The Premier should hang his head in shame for the way he allowed his ministers for agriculture and environment to hang a harvesting contractor out to dry for two weeks prior to the federal election. Ministers D'Ambrosio and Symes and the other place refused to ensure authorised officers were deployed to the Locking Coop at Ballantyne Saddle 
to begin the process of moving the protesters out of the harvesting zone. The local police attended the site on many occasions and search and rescue were just waiting for the call from DJPR authorised officers, but it never arrived due to the disgraceful inaction of the ministers, aided and abetted by the Premier for fear, fear of upsetting the Greens prior to the federal election. So, Acting Speaker, in closing, this budget, just like the failure of the government to protect law-abiding timber workers, fails country Victorians. It is a huge disappointment. Order the member for